There's been a strong tech and mega cap profit center within the S&P 500 recently. We check it out now with our chief equity strategist and economist, John Blank. What's driving it, John? Is this all part of that AI-fueled rally that we've seen? Well, that's the latest stage of it, Terry. But the S&P 500 infotech sector for 10, 15, maybe even 20 years has had a profit margin, operating profit margin and net profit margin, uh, two and a half times the average of the S&P 500. So as it grows more dominant within the S&P 500, the, the S&P 500's overall it, profit margin goes up. Now, it used to be Warren Buffett said, hey, the 6% profit margin in the 90s was all you could expect from the S&P 500. We're at you know, 12, 13 now because of the F infotech sector. So big scale and scope is available to these network uh, companies like Facebook and Google and Netflix and whatnot, and uh, it delivers the margins, Jerry. In Q1, the tech and mega caps carry the load in the market. Uh, do you expect them to continue in that strong leading position here? Terry, I looked into the video. We'll talk a little bit more about the stock in depth later, but you know, all 15 analysts in video are raising Q1, Q2 this year and next year earnings, and uh, there is no bull bear debate. Until there is, Terry, we got to assume there's there's a higher level for NVIDIA and therefore there's a higher level for tech. The S&P briefly crossed the 5,500 level for the first time recently. I think it was last week when I saw that. But then the NASDAQ snapped its recent winning streak. So some say this tech-led rally is beginning to show signs of fatigue. Do you see it that way? I, I just think we're going to get into some consolidation here for a few months, which would be healthy. Uh, but no, I think the underlying build for a 25 2025 look is in place and micron itself said they're sold out for 2025 and their chips so uh you know markets look 6 12 18 months ahead until we get a downturn that they see uh you know sideways consolidated markets probably be a better bet according to published reports tech has seen record cash inflows lately so because the stock rally is centered just on that sector and hasn't widened out. Does that concern you? Uh, you know, we talked about, you know, the higher profits and the higher percentages, the F infotech sector. So it's not as concerning as it was 10 years ago for the U.S. index. It does concern me um, outside the U.S. because there's less tech companies, unless you're talking about South Korea, Taiwan, or Israel. Uh, so not yet, but I think it does speak to something peculiar about this economy and it does strike me that people who are not participating either in their jobs or in their stock portfolios in the sector are not doing as well and that does create more worries for me from an inequality uh, perspective you've written recently that this market cycle has two unique characteristics what are they well one we're talking about is the info tech sector uh, the dominance of that, that is, it came out of, info, of COVID, you know, the big companies had grown so big, their footprints during that time and are now entering stage two of that. That's certainly one of those, the COVID cycles that no one predicted. But before we, you know, Spanish flu did not have info tech, and this one did. The other one we're seeing, Terry, is, you know, a record high net worth and record high home prices are causing a lot of people to exit the labor force or not come back to it. So labor for shortages, labor shortages across this economy um, are keeping the, the, the inevitable cyclicality the bears are, are pushing on us, you know, more and more in the rearview mirror. Because in, until people need to fire people and feel comfortable doing so en masse, there's just simply not going to be a downturn, Terry. So in light of all of this, what is the key takeaway for investors right now? Uh, you know, I think the key, key takeaway is, you know, to dollar average uh, through what may be a consolidation period and to understand that there are, you know, fundamental profit drivers in the tech sector in the United States that are, are making 5,500 on the S&P a lot more sanguine than one would expect. Um, having said that, a 10 or 15 percent correction is in, in a market like this should should be something you can weather and something you won't predict and something you can, when it hits you, you should not panic about. Strong buy stocks this month include NVIDIA, GE Aerospace, and Southern Copper. Yeah, let's talk about NVIDIA. We're gonna, you know, it's split 10 to one, so we're now down at 12, 126 today. We had a target price of 145, Terry. 
Uh, beta at 1.7. So that let's talk about the stock market beta of a major company at three trillion at 1.7. This stock really can move the market up with that 1.7 beta, Terry. And then GE Aerospace. GE Aerospace is you know the strongest growth spinoff of the GE companies. Uh, so we got a target price of 186. It's at 160 now. Uh, looking pretty sharp, Terry. Uh, average of the last four surprises is 33%. So why is this the case? Because basically jet engines for planes when the TSA is hitting record numbers of, of airline passengers, exceeding even COVID, pre-COVID times, um, you know, when you have to expand capacity for airlines, you have to buy planes and they can carry, carry these, these plane engines and GE Aerospace takes off. So GE Aerospace got to like it in this environment. And Southern Copper. Yeah, Southern Copper is a different story, Terry. Uh, people are betting that a lot of the transmission of power to data centers in the AI world is going to lift the copper companies. And we've seen this start, this rise begin somewhere in October of last year. It was a second rise off the AI boom that started a few months earlier. But now you got, again, a 1.2 beta stock. Um, last EPS surprise was 22. Average of the last four surprises, not that great, minus 36. So uh, like I said, Terry, it's a relatively recent uh, phenomenon for SCCO and it's like, uh, and we, we've yet to see if it has any legs, but there is a kind of a momentum trade in copper at this point in time. Uh, it's definitely come off a bit. Uh, we're at 108 now. And, you know, the highs were at the 120s with this stock. So well, let's see if, uh, you know, if the momentum traders get out of the stock and there's anything real to the story behind copper. All right. Our chief uh, equity strategist and economist, John Blank, on the strong mega cap profit center in stocks. With John, I'm Terry Ruffalo. Zach's insider trader finds stocks so strong that company officers are pouring their own money into them. You're invited to follow this portfolio's buys and sells in real time for the next 30 days. Go to zax.com slash promo for details. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.